Hey everyone, welcome to another AV Nirvana real world review. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through the iFi Aurora all-in-one music system. I'm not gonna lie, this thing really caught me off guard. iFi reached out a few months back to see if we'd be interested in reviewing anything from a list of their offerings, and I was immediately struck by the visual aspect of the Aurora. But what I found when I unpacked the shipping box was not what I was expecting. Like, at all. The iFi Aurora is a tabletop system that more closely resembles a Bang & Olufsen product than most of the black plastic desktop Bluetooth systems it might be shopped against. This thing is really gorgeous. It's a statement piece even when it's turned off. Inspired by Japanese industrial design, the Aurora is propped up with an aluminum A-frame raising the front at an angle and covered by horizontal and vertical bamboo slats. The horizontal slats cleverly housing the display and controls. Behind the bamboo slats reside four four and a half inch drivers, two forward firing, two side firing, and two 1.1 inch tweeters on the corners firing out at a 45. On the bottom are two 4.5 inch by 8 inch passive base radiators which explains the need for the angled design. This combination of drivers provides an impressive frequency response down to 27 Hz. It offers a myriad of connection capabilities including Bluetooth 5.0 with support for Aptex, Aptex HD, AAC, high res wireless audio and more. Airplay. Spotify and Tidal built-in plus RCA inputs, a 3.5 millimeter input, optical coax USB, even a slot for a micro SD card. There's also an ethernet port on the back for hardwiring to your network. So with all these options, it's safe to say, you'll have no problem connecting whatever device you have with the exception of HDMI. It has a 32-bit discrete ESS Sabre Hyperstream DAC chipset and has what iFi calls art automatic room tailoring, which it uses along with six sonar sensors to determine where in the room the system is placed and custom tailors the sound to your room. Another very unique item in the Aurora is invisible until you power it up and then you'll notice the glow of a vacuum tube behind the front display panel. A 6N3P tube is used in the pre-amplifier stage to really give the Aurora a rich, warm sound you just aren't going to find in a run-of-the-mill wireless speaker system today. The valve stage is the first in what iFi calls their pure emotion hybrid amplifier technology, which in this instance results in a 320 watt Class D amplification system. When looking through the list from iFi, I was expecting a box about half the size of what was delivered to my front door. This thing is big. With the holidays quickly approaching, I had pulled out the Zen Air Blue from the box for a quick holiday review and I stashed the Aurora for later exploration. When I finally unboxed the Aurora after the holidays, I set it up in my office work area downstairs and it was immediately noticed in Zoom meetings behind me and quickly became a topic of many conversations. It became part of my daily work routine, providing very pleasing background audio while I worked, running various jazz, chill electronic, and ambient playlists through it via Apple Music. At low volumes, the Aurora is the ideal office system. Its speaker configuration provides a sound that really surrounds you but doesn't necessarily distract. It's crystal clear, warm, and rich, and when you take a moment to relax a little bit and tune into your music, its high fidelity output leaves nothing behind while simultaneously capable of becoming almost subliminal when you're deeply focused into your work. All of this without touching the volume control. A few days in, as I was ending my work day and signing out, I heard one of my favorite tracks coming up on the playlist, All I Need from Air's Moon Safari album beautiful electronic ambient track with sultry vocals provided by Beth Hirsch. It's a favorite of mine for evaluating audio gear. So I turned around and decided what the Aurora could really do in terms of volume. Just lightly dragging my finger across the volume display adjusts the volume and I found myself underestimating what the Aurora had under the hood. I reached just over halfway before I had to back it off a bit. 
I stood up and walked around the room, which is also my home theater, so it's not necessarily a small office room. And I marveled at how the tabletop system not only filled the room with sound, but didn't give up anything in terms of dynamics or sound quality. Placement was definitely less than ideal for filling the room. I mean, this was down on a low shelf about 18 inches off the ground, pointing towards the short end of the room. When the track ended, I decided to, to sit down on the floor about two feet in front of the Aurora, and I pulled up my speaker and audio evaluation playlist. That same feeling of sound wrapping around me like a blanket while I was working became music surrounding me like a live performance when I gave it a little gas. Sonia Dada's Lay Down and Love It Live is a fantastic live recording that gives each instrument and voice in the rather busy mix its own space in the room. And the Aurora really created a 3D space for the band to perform in. This band includes drums, bass, two guitars, keyboards, a horn section, and three vocalists. There's a lot going on, and the Aurora did such an impressive job of separating all the elements out, more akin to what I hear on my Beolab 8000 tower speakers than what I would expect from these more compact tabletop speakers. The dynamic range of Freddie Jones Band's Waiting for the Night album was alive in the Aurora, while the acoustic guitar of Keb Moe's Just Like You was rich and clean with all the intricacies, and the kick drum had real impact. The iFi Aurora really did become part of my daily routine, and I honestly kept it here longer than I should have, because I really just truly enjoyed the sound. I really just loved the all-in-one capability of being able to sound really, really good at low volumes, but still be able to crank up the system at the end of my workday to decompress with a few tracks. I've not experienced many systems that are so effective at both ends of the spectrum with no adjustment other than sliding up the volume control. But alas, I needed to ship it back, so I brought it upstairs to film the beauty shots. I plugged it in just to light up the display for the visual. And just for kicks, I thought I'd see how it did in an untreated room of this size. I've run a lot of speakers through this room and very few have been able to nail it. It's a large room about 30 feet by 26 feet with open stairwells to the basement and upstairs to the bedroom, hard surfaces and windows, concrete floors all around. It's a tough room without a doubt. The Aurora nailed it. I still didn't even get the volume past three quarters of the way up without it being almost uncomfortably loud. The Aurora played well over any normal listening volume with plenty of headroom. The bass didn't suffer at all, remaining deep, rich, and clear regardless of the volume. To go through some of the recent speakers I've run through here, you know, it's not going to beat my five next level acoustic speakers plus a sub in the theater, but you wouldn't expect it to. It doesn't beat my Beolab 8000s in this room, but nothing else has. It destroys the Yamo S809 towers behind me. It beats the definitive technology BP20s in terms of clarity alone and has a bigger soundstage than the bipolar towers. It far outperforms some powered bookshelves I've run through here recently compared to the Sonos Play Bar. The Aurora goes far louder. They're pretty similar in terms of soundstage, but they have very different sonic signature and the Aurora digs deeper without distortion. That's a pretty impressive tournament resume. My expectations of this system were so far removed from the reality of its performance. When I selected it for review, I fully thought it would sit at the end of the kitchen counter and be a background while cooking type system that just happened to look really, really good. I was not expecting to be so blown away by the sound quality and capability. If I didn't already have a two-channel system that I've spent years evolving into what it's become in this room, I'd live with the Aurora in here in a heartbeat. I'm honestly shocked to be saying that. I'm also shocked to be talking more about the sound quality than the looks, but here we are wrapping up the review. Hopefully the video you've been looking at exemplifies the beauty of this product and what's gone into that. 
It's most definitely larger than I expected. You'll want to make sure you have a good space for it. But because it is so lovely to look at, it's not something you need to hide in a corner. It can take a prominent place and not be an eyesore. I'd love a few options for the wood finish, maybe a dark walnut and perhaps a cherry finish. But there's certainly nothing wrong with the finish that's offered. And showing artist and track information on the OLED display would be a nice touch, but I'm nitpicking. If you're looking for a two-channel system, this is definitely worth considering. It competes very capably with any bookshelf speakers in the price range, and it includes a powerful amp and fantastic tube preamp built into that cost. And the connection options make it compatible with pretty much any device you might be using. The sound field created by the Aurora even makes it a strong choice to place under your TV on a console as a soundbar. And that is my surprising, shocked take on the iFi Aurora all-in-one music system. I'm still shocked, legitimately. If you're able to find a retailer with one of these available, I highly suggest getting there and taking a listen yourself. You may find yourself as shocked as I am. I'll put links in the description for the official iFi site, which lists retailers. Now, links down there in the description may be affiliate links, and using them is a great way to support this type of content. The iFi Aurora. Looks, quality, and power all in a single package. Question for you all. Would you consider an all-in-one system like this to replace an existing two-channel setup? Would you clear out your towers and utilize a compact system if you found it sounded as good as your current setup? Or are you locked in to the idea and the concept that a good system has tower separate, or separate speakers, even bookshelves? Where would you use the Aurora? Would you proudly display it in your music room or is this a dining room, bedroom, or office system only? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, please make sure you click like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again real soon with another real world review.